who, what, when, where, how. These are the questions that came to me literally 20 seconds into playing Illmatic Envelope Swamp. Three words that you think wouldn't go together, and well, they don't. Welcome to this review of this weird ass shooter. Illmatic Envelope Swamp, also known as Ilvelo, is from the quirky team at RS34, a name that will no doubt be familiar to absolutely nobody. Their most widely known title up to this point is perhaps Radege Swag, another Japanese exclusive shmup that plays on its weirdness also. Now, you know me, I'm not a great shmup reviewer. I find I enjoy flying around like a headless chicken and blowing stuff up more my style than studying the game and its scoring system, so please take that into account. If you want a serious review, then you might want to look elsewhere, but obviously if you're a cool kid like me, you're gonna want to watch this one. So, Ilmatic Envelope Swamp, which from now on I will call Ilvelo Swamp, is a vertical scrolling shooter that thrives on being very peculiar. If I was being massively harsh, some comparisons may actually be made to Waifu Uncovered, since it does quite remind me of that game in terms of the general feeling, except this is made by competent people. That weirdness isn't used as an excuse to be crap. No, this chooses to be weird and good at the same time. Who'd have thought that? So as you'll see, everything is pretty much Japanese here. There's a surprising amount of text, and I'd actually offer this up as a potential Japanese Gems episode. Let's just say it's an honorary episode. Despite being a shooter, a little bit of head scratching, guesswork, and good old Google Translate may actually be needed to get into some of this. The story, well, just forget it, honestly, forget it. But there are plenty of challenges and tips that are useful that you may need to whip out that their cell phone. Can't believe I just said cell phone. Mobile. Whip out your mobile. There's a lot going on here in terms of what you can do. You have a standard shot going forward, but then you also have this module that you can fire out, which shoots on its own like a turret, and it even chainsaws enemies upon contact. And you can even move it around with the right stick. It is very, very tactical. But that's not all. If you hold the right stick in one of four directions before firing it off, you can have four special attacks at your disposal. One zigzag shurikens across the screen, one puts up a rotating shield around you that also damages the enemy. You'll probably want to gravitate to your favorite. Mine is the shurikens because, you know, ninjas are cool. But this is where the game is very clever in the way it forces you to use all of the mechanics at your disposal. You see, believe it or not, there are 100 stages in this game, of which I will very much admit to not close to seeing all of them at the time of this review. It's a very grindy shooter. It's a shooter with a surprising amount of gameplay and repetition that needs going back to time and time again. Upon first starting the game from stage one, you'll probably make it six stages before coming to an end boss. If you take a fork in the road, you'll probably end up to 12 stages in total before you hit a bit of a wall. Since in order to take different forks in the road, you need to unlock keys. Now this is where my tried and tested method of flying around like a headless chicken finally caught up with me and found me out for the fraud that I am. Because each stage has little challenges that will present you with a key bronze, silver, and gold. It took me longer than it should to realize, but you see these three icons at the top left? Yep, those are the goals per stage to earn a key. And it's generally just an image of an enemy with perhaps a smaller icon that probably indicates the type of weapon needed to be used. I'm not gonna go through all the permutations and explain which icon is which since I went through the pain of experimenting, and goddamn you will as well. I ain't suffering alone. Now this is not entirely easy even when you know what you need to do. Some are, but others are properly difficult, especially due to having to do them within a short time window. You'll need to grind these keys a fair bit in order to start to explore the vast amount of levels this game has to offer. So you're replaying it, you're having to use different weapons, target different goals, you probably won't get them in one go. And not only that, there are also mini challenges on each stage for extra bonus points, some of which are properly daft, like you'll occasionally get ones where you have to keep going left for a certain amount of time, like you hold down left until you achieve the challenge, but mostly they're similar to the key goals, but they can be a bit easier to attain. After playing the same few stages for a couple of hours, honestly, I was constantly achieving something new each time. It's a pretty crazy game and very replayable. It's so easy to just want to do one more, get a few more keys and get those mini goals checked off and hopefully start seeing the incredibly weird world this game inhabits. 
There's also little bonus stuff like letters to pick up, not that I can understand what they say. There's also online leaderboards, of course, and you can even change the background of the menu. And also, the weirdness. Look, I get some of you probably think it's been too funky for its own good, but I don't think it gets in the way. Although, the panic bomb, honestly, my daughter ran outside the room crying because that is just freaky. Believe it or not, this game is available physically in Japan, exclusively at the minute, and not only that, it is bundled with another game, one that I've mentioned already, Radergi Swag, so two weird ash shmups in one package. Now this may come westwards at some point, in fact Radergi Swag was pre-ordered by many people at the absolutely dumpster fire company Dispatch Games, but it never showed up, they took your money and ran, so buy this one, you know it's legit. There is a standard edition as well as a collector's edition which comes with a soundtrack CD baby, which is great because the music is pretty awesome. I'll pop links below if you want to import this and keep it forever, or maybe have some resale value if you get strapped for cash someday. If you use those links in the description and the pinned comment, then it also helps support us at the same time. We do earn a little bit from each purchase. Don't forget, if you use our links, you can also get a very lovely 5% off any physical item from PlayAsia if you use the coupon code SWITCHWATCHTV while checking out. That's all one word, SWITCHWATCHTV, for 5% off any physical item from PlayAsia. But please remember to click our link first. This is not available on Western eShops at the time of writing, but it is on the Japanese eShop on its own and not bundled with Radergi Swag. So if you need some Japanese eShop credit to download it, then there are links below for that too. It's priced at almost 3,000 yen, which is around 26 US dollars, 20 UK pounds, and 23 euros. I'll say this literally every time a shooter comes on my review list. Prices they don't make sense. You can buy an all-time classic shooter like Blazing Star for $5, or you can pay $45 for an all-time classic shooter like ESP Raido, which, by the way, you should check out that very recent Japanese Gems video we did on it. The value is in the eye of the beholder when it comes to shmups, and I'm also pretty sure that a dartboard is used in some capacity when deciding the price of these games. Although saying that, I can really see a lot of time being put into this one. This is not a shooter to learn and study, it's a shooter to grind through and gradually make progress, which I can actually enjoy, and it's not massively difficult if you're playing it safe. The early stages, the enemies barely even attack, a lot of time can be spent in this game. Unlike other shmups, uh, there's always something new going on, it's not like an arcade experience, and this is not a dig, I like Gunbird, like a 5 minute shooter. I know you can spend a lot of time learning that stuff, but in this game, you spend a lot of time making progress. Does that make sense? Overall, look, I'm not saying I've managed to reach the full depth of what this game has to offer yet, but so far, I am really enjoying it. Even though I got stuck for about an hour trying to work out how to get keys consistently, like a complete smeghead, I was still enjoying it, just doing the mini challenges. I think shmup fans will enjoy this, even if it's not exactly your standard type of shmup. This isn't bullet hell or twitch gameplay. This isn't where you really learn the bullet patterns or 1cc it. This is gradually plugging away, trying to do the challenges. It's not about surviving, it's about getting shit done, grinding away. And so probably it's got a lot more legs than most shooters out there on the market for a general audience. I'm well impressed. It's an 8 out of 10 from me. Alright, many thanks for watching this, guys. I hope you enjoyed this review. Thanks to our executive producers, Dane Wilkinson, God of Resin, Boombox, Brent McLean, Jonathan Rumor, Santa Tartaruga, Alexander Cato, J. Cross, 7776, Elisa, Punky Dusta, Michael Del Polito, Cartoon Soren, Jack Severus, Vilos, Robotech, Z, Raven Knight, Thorn Metal Luna, Parsnip Coffee, Government, Fat Cat, and Isa. Thank you for your support. Plus you. Yeah, you watching right now. If you watched all the way through, then you are the ones who help us grow. The longer you watch, the more YouTube shows us to other people. Please show me the weirdest emoji you know in the comments and I'll give you one back. Check out some of our other stuff. We have physical releases on Monday, digital bargains on Sunday, and be sure to check out Japanese gems, which this video very well could have been one of those. We'll see you guys over there. Have a good one.